Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Bull City Hangout 36. I'm Pat Murray. I publish the Durham Skywriter, that's Durham's online community paper. And I invite you to check it out at durhamskywriter.com. Now, with Bull City Hangout, I tell you what's happening this weekend here in Durham. And then, boy, is my microphone visible today. That's my mic. Please enjoy. Anyway, I do invite you to click on that link on the Facebook side and then join me on camera, shoot the breeze, information, etc. So with it being the weekend, that means maybe we can step back, do some paperwork if necessary, get our things together for the following week. So that means that I'm going to mention uh, while I'm on the Word page, Sky Writer, um, which is the government and, and nonprofit information page, um, I do, do want to mention that I have the uh, latest classes offered by the American Red Cross. Really helpful classes. Most of them are not free, but they are really good to know, like uh, CPR, um, adult and pediatric first aid. Um, there's quite a few classes. And I list, see, uh, until, um, let's see, April 3rd, I have classes listed up up to and including April 3rd. So also there, um, now most of these classes are a combination of in-person classes and online classes, just so you know, and they are being very socially distanced. Now there are also online only classes, which include babysitting basics, um, bloodborne pathogens, training for tattoo artists. I mean, all kinds of interesting classes, first aid for severe bleeding, um, opioid overdoses, etc. So just check it out. It's right there on the Word page. Okay, and also I'm going to list some city programs you might want to know about. The city of Durham has their eviction diversion program. If you're in danger of being evicted, definitely check that one out. Also, there is their water conservation poster contest for kids from kindergarten to grade eight. That should be really fun. Also, where's my fat trapper kit? I mentioned this during Christmas, not thinking it's going to continue um, past the holidays, but I guess this is a year round thing. So last week I went to the website, which is right there linked on the word page and sent in for my fat trapper kit. And it came in this nifty bag. Check this out. This is a cool bag. So fat trappers are to keep us from pouring um, fats, oils, grease, down the kitchen and clogging up the works. So this is the veiling, uh, unboxing, so to speak. I have not looked at this yet. So right away I see that the there's a new design. These are the aluminum resealable bags that you pour the grease and oil into. And then of course, once they're filled, that actually while you're using them, you put them for safekeeping. You don't want them just sitting on the counter, very unattractive. So here's a really nifty, plastic container with the city of Durham flag that you put the bag inside so you can keep it safe and the kids, you know, you want the kids tampering. So I got three really nice, wait, one, two, four, four really nice resealable aluminum bags along with, and I haven't looked in here yet. Oh, okay. One of those, um, this is really great for opening jars. If you're, um, if you have weak wrists like I do, this is really great for opening jars. Oh, this is great. You put this in the sink to catch um, food particles. All right, that's awesome. And what else? Ooh, City of Durham pencil. Ooh, Ooh City of Durham pen. Okay, they're getting really, uh, oh, look at this. I think this is an eraser. No grease, love it, love it. And what's this? Oh, I think this is a scraper. I think this is a scraper. Nice. And more bags. Okay, one, two more bags. Oh, this is awesome. I think this is an envelope um, opener. You just slide open. Or also, like, if you still buy CDs, if you're old-fashioned like I am, you can open seals with them. And I guess instructions and information and a magnet to remind you not to pour grease and oil down the sink. Wonderful. So send for yours today, City of Durham Fat Trapper Kid. There you go. Yes. And let me continue with my announcements. I just wanted to let you know about that. All right. And like I said, it took less, less than a week. So 
for me to um, get it. Now, also getting back to the City of Durham services and programs, uh, the city also has a water hardship fund to help you if you've fallen behind in your water bill. Let me grab some water. All righty. <clears throat> now let's talk about the county. The county has a LEAP program, the Low Income Energy Assistance Program to help you with your heating bill. Also, the county has the HOPE program, their version of an eviction program. It's the Housing Opportunity and Prevention of Evictions program. So check out both the city program and the county program and see which one works best for you. All right. Um, also, I mentioned are getting vaccinated over the weekend. Just to let you know that Go Durham and also Go Triangle, they offer free shared rides to and from your vaccination uh, appointment. So you, you just call 24 hours in advance to schedule, you know, pick up and, and drop off. So um, just know that. So if you are having, uh, if you're going somewhere to get vaccinated tomorrow, then of course you would uh, sign up today or rather call today and put in your free, yeah, this is really a great free service. I really like that Go Durham is doing this. And I should say Go Triangle as well. Okay, let's go to the uh, to your health page. Let's see to your health. As I've been <clears throat> as I've been saying, the county has a new wait list for those of us who have not been vaccinated yet for COVID nineteen. Right now, um, they're opening up opening it up to teachers, staff of uh, K through twelve schools and childcare uh, facilities or services. So be sure to check that out. Get on the wait list for that. And let's see where the tests are being administered with it being Saturday. So OptumServe is offering free COVID-19 tests at the Durham County Department of Public Health downtown until seven drive-through available and also at El San Fernando until six drive-through available. Tomorrow, uh, public health again, nine until seven drive-through available. This is free. And a lot of people I know are getting tested. Since it's free, they're getting tested every week because they go to the job. You know, they're on the job nine, whatever. All right, let's now go to the sports page. Sporting. Let's see. The senior games are on for this year. So Durham Parks and Recreation has just announced if you're age 50 and up, you can register for um, Durham Senior Games and Silver Arts. Um, the senior games will include like you know, sports, seeing the basketball and table tennis and golf, which is extra money. Um, as far as the silver arts, that's writing, photography, uh, drama, that sort of thing. So you can sign up um, actually starting last week. Uh, you, can, you can sign up as of March going on until April 2nd. So you do have plenty of time to sign up. It's $14 to register and a 20, uh, $24 extra fee if you're playing golf. As you know, if you're a golfer, you know you have to pay for pay for golf. That's just the way it goes. So this is gonna be fun. It's going to be held at different facilities and they're going to be socially distanced and very careful about how they um, carry on with the junior games and silver arts. So read about it on the sports page. All right, I think I'm gonna sign up. I, I did win a, a ribbon <clears throat> a few years ago. So I might sign up again. Let's see. Yes, DPR, Durham Parks and Recreation, sign up for upcoming pickleball lessons. Introduction to pickleball will be on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, and also, um, let's see, also Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. So it's going to be Mondays and Wednesdays, 6.30 to 7.30, or Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 until 9. That's pretty late. That's cool. So uh, read about that on the sports page. Also, they're gonna, going to have beginner tennis lessons. So tennis will be um, taught on Mondays and Wednesdays from six until seven in Whipperwill Park. And then they're going to have uh, tennis lessons. Oh, these are for kids. Okay, so ages five and six on Mondays and Wednesday evenings. And then for ages nine and 10, also Monday and Wednesdays, um, a little bit later. And then um, uh, age 18 plus, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Elmira Avenue Park. So this is really great. Read about this on the sports page. That sounds like really super fun. Now let's click on the big green button at the top of the page called the Great Outdoors. You see what's going on with the uh, state parks. So it looks like they're hiring. So 
Eno River State Park, they're looking to hire general utility workers and park technicians. You can read about what the jobs entail by clicking on the big green button, and then um, you'll see the article right there. It's at Eno River State Park. Also, Falls Lake, they are hiring general utility workers, park technicians, and park attendants, and fee collectors. I think you have to pay um, when you come in to park. I think that's what you pay for, basically parking. Okay, Jordan Lake, they're looking for general utility workers, park attendants, ticket booth operators. And yeah, I think they only pay eight an hour, but if you need a job and you like being outside, and uh, $8 an hour is better than $7 an hour. So I'm just saying, not trying to be flippant, but jobs are out there. And if you can handle eight an hour for what I would assume would be mostly outdoor work, that might be a good idea. Anyway, check it out, be that as it may, it's, it's worth checking out. Okay, now let's go to the Let's Go page, the calendar of events page. The South Durham Farmers Market, um, they're on right now until noon south on Highway 55 in the Greenwood Shopping Center. And then the Durham Farmers Market, their winter hours are 10 noon. They're in Durham Central Park downtown. The, this is the last day for the Haytai Heritage Film Festival. I hope that it was a huge, roaring success with it being mostly online. And also they, had, they have a drive through component at the Heritage Square parking lot across the street or kitty corner across the street on Lakewood. So I do hope you check it out. The whole schedule is still available. You can click on the link on the Let's Go, see which movies you'd like to watch. I think you, it's like $10 per movie. And again, you can watch them online. You can also go to the drive-in. So check that out. So last day. Hmm. Also the LGBT Center of Raleigh, they're co-hosting the Triangle Autism Discussion. It's about relationships. This will be on uh, today from 4.30 until 5.30. And this is for relationships, casual and romantic, um, different issues. You don't have to be a member of the LGBTQ community, but there, it's just that they're included in the autism discussion. So definitely check that out from 4.30 until 5.30. It's online. The Arabic course that's offered by um, Jamaat Ibad Ar-Rahman is going to be from 6.15 to 7.15. It's free and you can sign up. It's, it's definitely free, totally online. So check that out. Now tomorrow, this is so creative. The Durham DSA, uh, Durham Beyond Policing, Southerners on New Ground and Bull City Mutual Aid, they're partnering to, to hold the first ever break light clinic. So if you have a broken gate uh, brake light, they will fix it for free in the parking lot over there by the scrap exchange. So this will be tomorrow from noon until three. I don't think you have to sign up. At least it doesn't say so. I guess just drive over there and get in line. That's really creative. Also tomorrow, the Durham really, really free market is going to be held at Lion Park in the playground from two until four. And this is where you bring... Um, items that are in good condition, but unwanted. You just lay them out on the grass or tables or whatever. And if people take a fancy to them, they just take them home. And then if you see something you like, you can just take it home. That's what they mean by really, really free, no money exchange. That's going to be from two until four at the Lion Park um, playground. Now I'm gonna mention this um, starting Monday. I haven't even done the write up yet, but you will see this this afternoon. I will do the write-up as soon as I'm done here. But uh, Monday is going to be the first day of the 26th annual Reptile and Amphibian Days offered by the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences with their partners. So this is going to be a week long from Monday through Saturday, basically, of series of classes, videos, uh, live events, et cetera, centered around reptiles and amphibians. Be really, really fun. It's going to be free. Of course, they're going to accept uh, donations if you want to help them out. But that should be really fun. I wanted to mention that today because I like to sign up in advance for that. It's going to be super fun for kids and adults. Now, let's look at the weather. It's 45 and sunny. It's really nice out. It's going up to 54. It'll start getting a little cloudy right after noon. Tomorrow is going to be sunny all day and 52 degrees. Now, the link right there on the Facebook page is there for you to click on and join me. So let's see. It looks like Guy R. Cook from Walla Walla, Washington has already clicked. 
So let's see what's going on out northwest. <laughs> Guy, what's new? My background. You notice I'm. Oh, you got I, the. Um, I've cleaned what's that up. Word? The the it's, Japanese this is a divider. Shoji screen. Divider. You know who has nice. one of these? Just like this, Beverly Mahone has one of these leaned up in in the background. Next time okay. she's on camera, you watch for it. And okay, I was just cool. going, oh wow. And I Not see you're advertising thing. your podcast. Yeah, I need a little shout out there for the podcast. I need to straighten that up. It makes me look crooked. Um, Actually, I it really is like. I liked your unwrapping that you did on the the keep the grease out of the drains. Um, you. It's kind of okay. like, I oh. I got enamored by Bill Gates's campaign to reduce carbon footprint, and that's kind of mm -hmm. like an amendment to that. I think that keeping the grease out is somehow going to reduce carbon footprint because they're not going to have to make the motor start to pump it out or whatever. So, mm -hmm. good, good, do they good. offer that um, where where you live? Because I've never heard of this before. No, where the no, I, and, and, and you know the other thing they don't like, or they don't like, they don't light up, is they don't do the brake light fix. And my mind is, is racing. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking all the times. When I went and got my second vaccination, as you know, mm -hmm. I'm a grandfather. And mm -hmm. so we're the ones that go around and, and close doors in the grocery store that are left open and so forth. So the lady in front of me in line, because you're in your vehicle, her left rear taillight was burned out. So mm. as you can imagine, the cars are lined up and they're pulling ahead a little bit, putting the brakes on. And so again, that reinforced in my brain, her left brake mm -hmm. light is out. When I got up to the vaccination place and the mm -hmm. and the National Guard guy goes up, I said, will you tell that lady in front of me her left brake light is out? I, I'm not going to sleep until I know she knows. Wow. So they did. They told her. And then, nice. So we get the shot. And we pull up in the waiting area because they make you wait 30 minutes to make sure you don't have side effects and so forth. Okay. So I got out of the car. And walked up to her and said, did they tell you about their brake light? Yeah, they did. Are you the one? I said, I've been following you since forever. And mm -hmm. it's really a stress. And God's honest truth. She said, today's the day I'm taking this in for the, you know, the service. Every six months or a year, they give oh. you a, an email okay. that says, hey, you need to come in for your service. So that's one of the things she's going to have fixed. So my nice. mind is at least. My, my How about is, that? I'm just... Anytime I can find something to bring me comfort, you know. Mm -hmm. and That's nice. Nice of you so to do that. On the Facebook group in Walla World, Wally World is what we're the colloquial name for it. Mm -hmm. And they put up a post that the Walla Walla <laughs> Sweet Onion Starts were available at Andy's Market, a local local Ooh, uh, onion. grocery store. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, Stephen, my youngest son, that lives in Tri Cities. He needs to have some of these. We haven't mm -hmm. seen Zuzu, my granddaughter, his daughter, since last November, before Thanksgiving, because of the That's COVID. That's hard for a grandparent, isn't it? Yeah. So we mm. see pictures on Facebook. That was the, the placebo. And so I, I called him up. I don't know. I messaged him, text messaged him, and they said, mm -hmm. you want some onion? Sure. So I went, and the, the bunch of onion is pretty big. There must be, oh, I don't know, 50, 60 plants in a bunch. And I thought, well, he'll he'll get half of this, and then I'll I'll go over to our new house and plant the other half. Mm -hmm. He wanted all of them. What? Yeah. What's he going to so do? I, start a farm or something? Well, he's got raised garden beds. It's I think it's I kind of chip off the old block. Mm-hmm and inspired him to to grow stuff i grow great tomatoes um i i hope to reclaim my raised beds in my backyard this year and to grow some crops let's let's talk about raised beds for a second have you on one end or one side of your raised bed do you have like a trellis affair for stuff that climbs like cucumbers or tomatoes or stuff or are um, you just box like 
I was thinking of putting up something, but for now, I don't know what's out there just yet. I yeah. have to go out there and see what's growing, if anything. Right. But what I, was, what I was growing before I let my backyard go back to nature, and I'm trying to yeah. reclaim it now, I had um, ra a wonderful berry patch, gold raspberry, like candy. Oh, wow. I also had um, strawberries. Ever, speaking of um, raspberries. And asparagus. On raspberries, have you ever had the the variety that's thornless? They don't have any stickers on them at no, all. No, just such a they thing. They have such a thing. My my niece Katrina had some in her yard when we lived on the coast. We were mm -hmm. always going up there picking because she had like oh gosh, probably a thirty foot long row, way more raspberries than she'd ever eat. Mm -hmm. So she said, "Hey, if you guys would come and help, you know, clean wow. these up." And they were big. As big as wow. they your thumb. And, nice. and you could just pick them and you didn't have to worry about getting stickers. It was great. Mm -hmm. Even nice. the backs of the leaves were thornless. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the guy that developed that strain of raspberries, as far as I'm concerned, he gets one of those gold medals or whatever award they have for great innovations in plants. That was a 23 Jules Stemwinder. Wow. Now, Sheila Huggins is watching from YouTube. She says that she tried to start a garden a few years back, but the squirrels mm -hmm. and rabbits had uh, had the time to tend uh -huh. their garden, even though they... Here's a here's a, uh, a suggestion. Squirrels do like to decimate gardens sometimes, but what yeah. they're doing, when they grab tomatoes, they're really thirsty. So what they're doing, they're taking a bite of the tomato, sucking out the yeah. water, then throwing it away. They're not eating the tomato. So I started putting out bowls of water near the tomato. Yeah, you shared that once. That's a good idea. Because I've yeah. had maybe one or two instances where I would find a tomato with just one little nibble out of it, and then they mm -hmm. just leave it sit. They don't throw it anywhere. Yeah, they're, they're sucking water. Oh, yeah. So put out watering dishes, you know, like dishes of water. And that should oh, yeah. keep, hopefully, them from, from stealing your tomatoes. That could be yeah. really frustrating. Yeah. Really frustrating. And I learned that so, from one of my neighbors in Chicago. Let's let's talk about microphones. Microphones, okay. Yeah. How Just come my this microphone. big, big monster oh, has to be yeah. in the shot? Is it not sensitive enough oh, to pick your voice? Now or? that now that I'm using, see, I'm sitting on my stationary bike, which has a very right. small uh, desk uh, attached to it. And and thank you, uh, Sheila Huggins, likes the idea. Thank you, thank you. Here's the thing. Um, I was using my ironing board right. before. And the ironing board is, of course, what, five feet across? So there was yeah. room for me to place the mic on its stand next right. to me, but out of shot. But now that I'm elevated, on my stationary mic, the, the desk is only this wide and there's no room for the mic. So now the mic is on a mic stand. And for it to be closer, um oh, I clear down to the floor mic stand. I got yeah. you. So now it's 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 in the shot. I don't mind because a lot of people have their mics in the shot. It only makes me look like I'm cool and on the radio. Is that, so it's cool. That's so I don't mind. You know, that wasn't the first thought I had. Oh. The first thought I had was you're wearing a black shirt to match the microphone. So now oh. is her accessories going to always be to match the color of the microphone? Oh, and if she no. gets a different color, like a blue shirt, are you going to have a blue? Uh, I actually could. I do have some colored mic things. Oh, yeah. shout out you know to me, Shout out to 7th Ward, Washington, yeah. D.C., Main Street, run by Debbie Jones, just saying. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, that's in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, um, Seventh Ward. It's a small business program that my friend Debbie runs. Basically, it's one of those Main Street federal programs where a person um, looks after, so to speak, the small businesses in the community and whatever right. they need, training or beautification or, or maintenance or safety, they, yeah. they help get done. Cool when we lived on the coast, the community we lived in on the coast is called Port Orchard, Washington. And yes, you'll have to Google it. It's a little town. But they had what was called the Port Orchard Bay Street, Street Merchants Alliance. And those okay. were the guys that took care of putting new flowers in the flower pots on the sidewalk, 
putting up nice. the Christmas lights and the and gotta do that. Yeah. Probably a lot like Seventh Ward. I don't know if, if they have t shirts though. I'll have to ask Christine. Yeah, you gotta um, have the t shirts. Way back when I helped them set up one of their first websites. And um, mm -hmm. you know, when you're the when you're the geek in town, yeah. people come yeah. to find out. And they uh, like the other day, the God's honest truth, the other day somebody bought some wireless headphones so they could hear the TV better. Mm -hmm. Cause because the mister at this household, his hearing's going like mine. And I had to go over to that house and show them how to hook it up. You know how to hook it up. Oh yeah, it was, it's too technical to plug in because the red plug has to go into the red plug. You know, mm -hmm. I I kind of chuckled this about it. I, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's what they call it. Any anything on computer, plug it in, mm -hmm. gadgets, I'm the guy. No pun intended. It's kind of funny how so many people say, well, I'm not really technical. It's really yeah. not a matter of being technical because I don't understand anything about computers in terms of the yeah, inner work. You, you read the book. You, you, yeah, it you comes, comes, any gadget you get comes with a set of instructions. And it says it's like color by numbers. tab A into slot A. You know, just easy as cake stuff to do if you read the book. Yeah, you now, don't have we'll to know just, how it works. Thank we'll God. Just, yeah, we'll just call a guy and then he'll fix it and then it'll be okay. What's really funny is how young people seem to be born knowing technology. Oh, yeah. Way back well, all their life. You know, think about it. Anybody born from 81 mm -hmm. to now has had the Internet and computers sure. and all, that stuff all their life. I was, was going to say, though, that this this guy, he was the head of the art department and graphics department at um, the engineering firm I used to work at. And he said that this is back in the day, 1980s. So okay. he said he would, uh, when he tape a show, he would hand the controls to his five-year-old, who not I only set it all up. yeah, yeah, who not only knew how to set it up and and um, record the show, but also knew how to avoid the commercials and all that sort of thing. <laughs> a five-year-old, my brother-in-law, he kids saw. Are a, we both have Amazon Fire Stick, and he saw a thing on the internet the other day how you could download live TV or something from one of those free TV channels and then bleep out the commercial. Okay. Oh, I know you could do that. Okay. Good to know. I've got the article, but I have never explored it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of I don't see anything sticks, worth really recording these days. This Put this on your go-to list. I mean, okay. you're so busy with everything else. Why not add some? The new sequel movie that Eddie Murphy made about going coming to America now it's oh, yeah, now it coming, the number two America. We watched that last night on Amazon Fire Stick. It's okay, I, I haven't watched the first one yet, but um, I might get around to it one of these decades. The, the first one came out 30 years ago. I know. I'm not Where good with sitting still doing? watching movies. I'm not good at that. Uh, that's I'm really that's not the good thing at that. they had, and in Washington State, they're saying the movie theaters are going to open up again to 25%. Mm -hmm. Why would okay. you want to go to a movie theater? Because, for example, um, I think it's Warner Brothers is putting all their new movies onto HBO Max. Mm -hmm. So you can sit down in your... Now, now, the perspective I have means mm -hmm. I'm a recliner camper. You know, there, there's couch potatoes, and then there's recliner campers. I'm one of those. Mm -hmm. You have a lazy so, boy? Yeah. I'm sitting in the, in the recliner... I'm watching Tom and Jerry. That's the most recent movie I watched. A cartoon. Okay. It's a cartoon and live action mixed together. How they do okay, layers. Like, like and, Roger yeah. Rabbit or something. Yeah, yeah, it's cute. It's cute. Yeah. And okay. I'm thinking, why would I want to go to a movie theater, pay eight dollars for popcorn, which I can make at home in my microwave, and and sit in a movie theater chair instead of my recliner? Yeah, that is people. They'd have some to be people, a good movie. Yeah, but some people feel that it's more magical in theaters with the huge screen well, and the sound around. I don't I don't agree for myself. Again, it's hard for me to sit still for a couple hours like have, that. That's torture. Have you been for me. to one of those IMAX theaters? Once. I saw um a movie about space. Yeah. 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 It was we that went, was 
That when, was good. When, when Avatar came out, everybody's seen Avatar. When it came out, my youngest son, Stephen, the one I just planted onions for mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. ago, he says, hey, we're going to go to the, the IMAX theater in Seattle. And he lives in Tri-City. He's like 250 miles away. He drove clear over to the mm-hmm. coast to take us to IMAX. He says, you got to see this. So I'm going, the theater, wow. it can't be that damn good. You know, I mean, there's good theaters, but come on. For that kind of a drive? So, I hope so. I went. I went to the IMAX theater, and before they start the movie, the guy comes out and he tells you about the IMAX that you're going to watch. The mm-hmm. screen is five stories tall. Oh, yeah. They have a 60,000-watt sound system. Mm-hmm. And the seating and, is such that it's, the, it's more yeah, vertical. Yeah, there's no bad seats. There's no bad seats in the house. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you sit. On the side, mm-hmm. in the middle, doesn't work. don't worry about it's it. Like, and and the movie is in 3D, so you got to wear those mm-hmm. kind of glasses. So I'm watching it, and I'm not getting 3D in the whole movie. I'm I'm going 3D. I mean, it's a great picture and stuff, but there's nothing flying out from the screen or nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. And then right towards the end, they got these little like jellyfish flowers flying off the tree, mm-hmm. and those I saw coming out from the screen. Swear to okay. God, you did. And I was just. Mouth fell mm-hmm. open. I just could not believe it. And I, then I was scared. I'm going to cool. take the glasses off. They brainwashed me. <laughs> yeah. That was a that was a doozy. That's cool. I mean, um, it's just worth going to the theater for the huge 3D experience, but not for an ordinary yeah. movie. Yeah. I, that's what Darlene is. If if the movie comes out, that's really really a good one. You know, like one that we both just have to see because it's just that good. Mm-hmm. Then we'll go to the IMAX theater because they've mm-hmm. got one down in Milton, Oregon, about an hour south of us. And I think um, they'll go to the theater and see it that way. One. I don't think there's one in Durham, I don't think. Because the one I went to was oh, at, really at, with um, all that college there. I would think that Durham would have one. With the, no, I think with the, the, one, the one I went to was in Raleigh at one of the museums. Yeah. Yeah. We might have one in Durham, but I don't if we do, I don't no, know I, of it. Google it. Hello. I'm, I'm not it. sure. Anyway, yeah. you got a lot of work to do, and I've got I do. It's Saturday. Be- behind this partition, you can't see it because it's covered up. Behind that is the the garden start plants growing. And because there's okay. lights on all the time, it makes me look like I'm in a shadow. So I covered it up. Okay. But that's that's gonna get finished setting up. I decided last night at like I don't know, a little after five. You know, planting that bunch of onions was really a motivational thing. I think I need to start my garden starts. Yeah, what what else are you going to grow this year, Guy? um, I just posted it on Facebook, and I just remembered. I'm going to have varieties of tomato, zucchini, Mm -hmm. blue lake bush green beans. Got to have those. Those are awesome. Mm. Okay. Strawberries. In fact, I was just looking at, before you put up the post on Facebook, I was looking at Home Depot to check out uh, raised beds. And that's yeah. why I had the question about the trellis, because they they make them both ways. They make them like mm-hmm. a box, or mm-hmm. they make them with a trellis on one edge. And yeah, my, my so, raised beds are actually cinder blocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, do you line them or just put dirt in them? They're good. Ooh, I did it so long ago. I think I initially did line them. That was years yeah, would, ago. Who knows what's going on back there? The water from leaking out so fast. Because cinder yeah. blocks are, sure. are porous, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when you irrigate, mm-hmm. you have to allow for losing a little bit of water through seepage. But I also have these pointy things that you can screw liter bottles onto um, to... Oh, um, to irrigate? Yeah. For, I've, tried, I've tried those and I didn't I didn't yeah. keep. Them. I used them one time, and I the water glug 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 oh. right down. And I said, "Okay, yeah." Oh, okay. Well, it's not supposed to glug glug because the pointy things are supposed to have tiny holes, so yeah. the water. Yeah, that's what I had. That's what I had. But I th- I think that see now in North Carolina, your your soil is more clay, isn't it? Yeah. Like Although I put only I only put improved soil. 
in my raised bed though. That's the nice thing about raised beds that you can control the type of soil that, that you uh, work okay. with. Yeah, that's true. You get yeah. the raised beds, you get to pick the litter. Mm -hmm. I bet. So I think I'm gonna grow raspberries, um, strawberries. I did send for those uh, seeds that you told me about last year, those special tomatoes. So yeah. I'm gonna try those. Um, You'll love them. I like, I like squash so much. I love squash and onions. So I think I'll probably grow some yellow squash. Now see, squash would grow on a trellis. Anything yeah. with a vine will climb. Mm -hmm. Like my cucumbers, I always do them on a, on a trellis. Because then yeah. it doesn't take up as much room. Yeah, I put up the round cages. Yeah. So that's what I tend to use. So yeah, I'll for, probably tomato, use for tomatoes, cages. I have those. In fact, this mm -hmm. last year, I bought, um, or no, I, didn't, I didn't buy them. My brother only get, loaned them to me. Those big six foot tall steel posts, the T bar posts. Oh, sure. They're, you know, they're green and white on the top. Mm -hmm, so I pounded mm -hmm. those in the ground and then I tied the regular tomato cage up to that post because okay. I don't know what it is. I'm just growing good tomatoes. I don't, I think Walla Walla has got a lot to do with it, which is just a really got the beautiful, good the beautiful um, temperate. Weather yeah. and the moisture. Well, it, it, it's a lot of sun. In fact, mm -hmm. Stephen, he posted a post. Somebody did a misprint on their newspaper there in Tri Cities, an hour away. And he said, We've got 400 days of sunshine in Tri Cities. It's supposed to be 300, but they put 400. And he goes, He put that up and he says, Wow, I don't know if I can handle that. And I commented back to him, I said, You know, sunblock sales are going to go through the roof. 400 okay oh yeah that's why proofreading should never go out of style yeah yeah i don't think it's ever going to be extinct to not have to have proofreading because it's mm. just one of them things well anyway yeah. you have a good day well, you have a great weekend guy yeah i've got plans i when you were doing the weather i said oh i need to go see if the weather because you know please i have that kind of a friendly debate on whose weather is cooler mm -hmm. Well, starting at yeah. 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock this morning, 96% chance of rain. Wow. So I assume it's so, raining right so now. The only, the only good thing I can think about that is, well, the onions I just planted yesterday are going to love it. Sure. Nobody else is. I was going to take a lot of stuff up to storage, but if it's going to rain for the duration, I got to check it again and see how long it's going to last. Maybe it's okay. only going to be for an hour, but... 96 percent sure, that'll, that'll be good for new yeah. new plant starts. it's going to okay. make umbrellas umbrella so I, might, are going through the roof. <laughs> I might do some live streaming tomorrow yeah. um at the break at the break light clinic so I, i'm gonna head you out know, there tomorrow I was, and, I was daydreaming about that and why I, don't they, that would be really fun. I would i would make the suggestion to them and I don't know how you do it without throwing yourself under the bus, but so that they have every flavor of bulb and such sitting on the table waiting for a car number 27 to show up. And mm -hmm. he's a, he's got a 1978 Mercury and needs the taillight and it's a number 27 or whatever. So if they know thought, ahead of time. I thought the taillight, taillights would be pretty much the same. They're not? No. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can I can think back to the times that I've done it myself. You know, backyard mechanic that I am. Mm -hmm. I just, the I just poke the light bulb now, in there and learn about your business. Now they're not even a light bulb. Now they're these little LED things, and you got to hold them with a tissue because your oil on your finger will make them goof up. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. it's bad. And and headlights, headlights and, and turn signal lights on the front the same way. They're just an mm -hmm. LED bulb and a great big gizmo to reflect the light, but you just got one yeah. little tiny bulb and it does the job. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll see me live stream tomorrow. Uh, well, it should be fun. Now, when when you go for walks, when you go for walks with the camera, do you just hold your phone in your hand or do you have a a gadget? Um it's usually in a little backpack. Oh, uh, okay. my if, if I'm on assignment, I have it pre mounted on a with a handle and a mic, a wireless mic. Uh, okay. So, okay. 
so yeah, so usually it's on a, it's already on a, so that I could, you know, and then or sometimes I actually have it on a, um, I also have this, um, it's like a two-handed cage kind of thing. Depends on what I want to use for that day. And then I slip it into my backpack and, and yeah, you know, yeah, I usually I don't have this phone in my hand though, no. I made the mistake of thinking I could, well, I can just take my phone in my, my shirt pocket. And mm -hmm. then go for the walk and, and do the blah, 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 and come back. So I get back home, and you can, it's like this much is showing. <laughs> Just the very top of the camera was, t and, it, and it was mostly sky. I said, well, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> yeah. We'll Actually, if you're going to be walking, I, I suggest a gimbal. Gimbal makes it real smooth. Yeah. So, but anyway, well, let me, um, I got to. I'm I'm be leaving the house in 20 minutes. I'm actually going to Home Depot, so yeah. a friend's going to pick me up. So I better uh, get ready. So okay. uh, I bid Have you fun. a good day. Take care. And I'll see you Monday. All righty. Okay. See. Ya. Okay, folks. That is it for today. It is 45 right now, going up to 54. It's going to be sunny up until like. Uh, early afternoon, and then it will be partly sunny. Tomorrow's going up to 52. Now, if your brake light is out, I might see you tomorrow at uh, in the, the parking lot of the exchange. It's going to be from 12 until 3. Well, they'll be fixing them for free. So with that, you have a great, great weekend. And for Bull City Hangout, I'll say goodbye and until noon on Monday. By the way, don't forget to sign up for the 26th Annual Reptile and Amphibian Days. It's all going to be online Monday through Saturday next week. And it's held by the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. So have a great weekend. See you soon. Ciao for now.